thank you so much for joining us here on The Voice of Job Seekers once again. And should you be interested in knowing more about the other podcasts that we have, as well as the articles on The Voice of Job Seekers, go to thevoiceofjobseekers.com. There you can download to your device uh, the podcast if you'd like. Um, or you can go to iTunes or Stitcher if you want. Uh, hopefully this will be of some value today. As we talk about resumes, and I'm bringing back Melissa Cooley, uh, who's been on the show four or five times, I think. <laughs> it's oh like that. Something <laughs> like that, yeah. And uh, just of those who are listening for the first time, she's a certified advanced resume writer and career coach. Uh, Melissa Cooley.com is an award-winning blog, and she's been quoting Career Builder, The Daily Muse, and Monster a few times, as well as Dice.com. I uh, just want to welcome back, Melissa. How are you? I'm doing well, Mark. How are you doing? Good, good. You know, it, you know I love interviewing my friends. Mm-hmm. And I love it when my friends have done has done significant work in the space, so that makes it a little bit easier to talk to them. Though I really, you know, it, I don't think it's hard to talk to anyone I bring on, but particularly with you, when we talk before we record, we end up talking almost exhaustively and say, oh, we've still got a <laughs> podcast <laughs> to do. So um, this is going to be interesting discussion. Uh, as I explained to you, uh, on the phone uh, through email, Melissa, that uh, um, this is probably going to be the only resume dedicated show this fall, uh, oh. being that there's so much to cover uh, already. So I'm pretty excited to, um, we won't go exhaustively into it because I think we wore out some of what we were supposed to talk about, but definitely I want to get your take um on uh, some of the newer trends in resume writing. Probably not the newer trends, but probably the where we are uh, now. I think the last exhaustive talk I had was with uh, Jackie Barrett Poindexter when we talked an hour and 20 minutes. And that oh, is still, that's an episode uh, 72 for those of you who want to just go back. And as we talked about the resume, then we talked about how uh, social media plays a big part of it. And then we went back to the resume, uh, which I think is a pretty important discussion as, you know, your resume these days is not just the marketing sheet of paper that you give an employer these days. Well, I mean, you know, it certainly is. It is, but you you're, know. You're, it's definitely part of the marketing documents that you have um, for your career. Um, you know, but it really, it really needs to accurately reflect, you know, your career history, what you've done, who you are, mm-hmm. and it just it also needs to show your values mm-hmm. and. You know, I mean, that whole idea of fit, you know, cultural fit is more important than ever, Um, you know, for not only the employer, but for the candidate, too. You know, candidates are more discerning and should be about where they work and, you know, if this is something that's going to really, you know, resonate with who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, And so... You know, so being able to set forth that um, that idea of you know what kind of values they have, what they bring to the table, and 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 really, you know, it also sets a tone for what they expect uh, their employers to be like. Um, you know, that that's yet another um, th- you know way that the resume helps serve candidates in the process of uh, finding a job. Yeah. Well, I think that um, there are still arguments of how significant a resume really is. Um, and you've probably seen the LinkedIn post, the post, the articles in Inc. Magazine and so forth about the resume being proclaimed dead. Um, it, you know, it, it, and yet every posting that we read still says we want a resume for you, from you is, it, you know, I, I think in your view, having, you know, uh, at this particular 
point have written hundreds of resumes and you get lots of requests on a weekly, daily basis. Do you find that people are still skeptical uh, in investing that time in writing one? Um, you know, no, they're, they're not as skeptical about, you know, they, they, there's definitely this whole, I need a resume. Um, I, I think folks understand that. And, you know, it, it was just so funny when you were bringing up the whole, you know, the resume is dead. I, I have been hearing that again and again, ever since I got into this in 2009, mm-hmm. ever since I got into this field, you know, they were proclaiming the resume is dead. And, and I was thinking, okay, if that's really true, then that means I'll be obsolete in just a few years. And, you know, some would say, oh, it would be in five years. I'm like, so that would have put it at 2014. Well, you know, it's 2016 and, right. you know, there's still a need for it. And yeah, I mean, you know, that's just it. I mean, networking, I mean, yes, very important. Cannot overstate the importance of networking in a career and how it can benefit your career. Um, but, you know, when that's all said and done, you know, that the person that you're networking with is one contact and only one person who makes the decision, you know, because Mm -hmm. more often than not, um, hiring decisions now are made by committee. Yes, there's a hiring manager, but there's always a pan, almost always a panel of people who interview and who are evaluating uh, folks. And so if you know one person on that panel, that's great, but all those other people are going to need to know who you are and, they want to see a resume. They want something. Um, I mean, while resumes shouldn't be formulaic, um, there is a certain expectation for um, how they should flow and and the general order of things on a resume. And so, you know, that helps them to, you know, com- be able to compare three different ca- uh, candidates because they're, you know, they're looking at like the same basic information on all of them. And it's just, okay, how does each of these people present themselves on paper? Yeah. You know, it just, it really helps to kind of pull everything together. Maybe from when you started to now, is there a downgrade in its value as to what it means uh, to, to hiring? I, I really don't think so. I mean, is there an evolution to the resume? I mean, absolutely, yes. It has definitely changed in the past. You know, like I said, you know, from 2009 to now, my involvement in this field, um, it most definitely has changed and and has evolved into a document that needs to be able to pretty quickly Mm -hmm. deliver value um, to the reader. Um, But in terms of a devaluing of its... um, uh, of its purpose, I, I really don't think so. I mean, just because, you know, a lot of people, when they say the resume is dead, they try to say, oh, you know, you have your online presence with LinkedIn and, and blog posts and whatever other social mm-hmm. media you do. And, you know, and, and then, then there's talk of like the video resumes and all that other mm-hmm. kind of thing. And, you know, the thing of it is, all of those other to pull all those other pieces together takes sure. time, you know, to look at LinkedIn and then look at your Twitter feed and then look at, you know, what you're saying on your blog and blah, 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 you know, and to go all those different places. Um, if they, if a company is in a process of vetting candidates for mm-hmm. interviews, they're not going to take all that time. They, 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 they are like, we have, 25 candidates we need to evaluate. We need to whittle it down to 10 for the first round. You know, they want something that's going to concisely tell them, you know, who this candidate's yeah. about, uh, you know, it, or what all the candidates about and, you know, who this candidate is. And, you know, they, what's the better way to deliver that than mm-hmm. the resume? It's, you know, a concise document and they can just go through those once they get, say, 
past the first stage to the second stage and they've like winnowed it down, you know, they want to winnow it down some more, you know, if there's a couple of can, you know, candidates that rose to the top in the interview process, then yeah, they may start digging a bit deeper and learning more. But on a first pass, no way. I mean, that would be a waste sure. of time. So give us a perspective, if you don't mind. Um, let's play compare and contrast. Uh, from 2009 till now, um, what would you, say, would you say be the are like two or three uh, parts of the resume itself that uh, is different than uh, different today than it was then? Well, I, I would say one of the biggest changes that I've seen uh, from 2009 is in the profile. And, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's something that it previously used to be the, <clears throat> excuse me, the objective where a person would state what they want to do. And then it became that the profile where someone would write a paragraph about, you know, five lines long mm-hmm. that would tell who they were and what... Um, what skills and attributes they possessed, and you know, and that would be kind of up top mm-hmm. and center. And um, now it, it just seems like even that's too much. And um, you know, resumes now a lot that I'm seeing they have like a header with, where the person has stated this is what they do, and you know, a- and then instead of a paragraph, a profile paragraph they'll have like profile statements, I I guess is how I'd Mm. refer to them, you know, or it's like, you know, kind of breaking up that paragraph, but having, you know, really punchy things and not just talking about soft, fuzzy attributes, but like hard hitting, this is what I've done kind Mm. of a thing. So, that you know, when you're talking like even the top quarter, they used to talk about like the top fold of a resume, having to really make the case for a person. It's Seeming like the top quarter, if you cannot catch people's attention with your headline and some attributes like that really kind of hit you between the eyes right away, you you might not get a chance even. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, and and really having um, a bit more going on in terms of like, say, you know, boxes that maybe pull out key information or a graphic that may show, you know, uh, some, some, uh, some, um, you know, progress that you've made, like say if you've slashed costs or increased sales or, or what have you, you know, whatever, um, key performance indicators matter for your job, you know, having a graphic, Mm -hmm. you know, on that first page, I mean, just things like lots of bells and whistles that may draw people's eye because they don't necessarily read just linear left to right. Like you would a book. It just, you're at, you know, the, the, um, person's eyes jumping around kind of trying to take in what they can in just a few seconds sure. really so sure. really we're talking about really two or three sentences instead of the five that are result oriented and branded exactly you know that that can speak to the results that a person has gotten you know in similar positions but also two that start to speak to um, like the work ethic and and what can be expected of a candidate mm-hmm. should they be hired. Still, would that, with the new school thinking, uh, be attractive to the old school ways? You know, that that's interesting um, to think about. And, um, it, you know, I, I mean, for some people who have it like who would have the expectation of the you know the regular black and white Mm -hmm. resumes no graphics that kind of thing um potentially they could see all of that as like smoke and mirrors and just trying to distract from you know what 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 is really happening but the thing of it is even with all of the the bells and whistles and such Um, I mean, the fact remains that content is king. If you, if you don't have anything really good Mm -hmm. to say, the, the most beautiful resume in the world isn't going to help you because you haven't really done anything or you haven't really explained why you are a great candidate. 
So, you know, so it's worth the time to still invest in, you know, quality content and, and to be very clearly articulating career stories and accomplishments and, you know, that right. kind of thing. Um, what would, and again, let's play a little bit more uh, into compare and contrast, if you will. And this, again, this for people who are going to write their own resume no matter what. They're likely, uh, not likely to hire somebody to like yourself to write. Um, I think one of the things that people struggle with in understanding is the importance of accomplishments, results, and impact. And maybe and probably that part of the resume couldn't be explained enough in various different ways for people to really understand what that really means for employers to be able to scan that section and and decide right then if they want you based on that you've explained something that nobody else has. Right. And that's that's the thing. Um, I, I think really um the work experience section for <clears throat> excuse me a lot of candidates i think tends to be one of the mm-hmm. weaker sections because 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 people still think about their jobs in terms of their duties they don't stop to think that oh well you know this job is really easy and it's easy because i'm really good at it they just think oh it's easy it's mm-hmm. no big deal so many people um, it's kind of like they, they don't really realize what their superpower right. is. You know, they, they, they think, oh, well, I can do this. Everybody can do this. And, um, it, you know, it, and, and it's, it's sometimes good to talk to, you know, get a third person perspective, talk to somebody else mm-hmm. and to get them to say, no, you don't understand. Other people can't do this the way you mm-hmm. do. And you really need to, um, so you need you need to sell this aspect a bit more. Um, I remember working with um, one of my clients who she um, she was going through some transitions in life, and she originally had just been uh, working part time as a teller at the bank where she was mm-hmm. working at, but she was going to need to get a full time job, and so she came to me to put her resume together. And initially, she was just thinking, oh, you know, to become a full time mm-hmm. teller. And just in talking with her and, and her life experiences and, and, and really what she brought to um, her job. I mean, just her professionalism and and very focused on customer service and that kind of thing. I said to her, I said, you know, I said, I, I think you're selling yourself short. I said, you really should be because she had some supervisory experience in her background I said, you really should think about, you know, trying to go for a supervisor position. I said, you've you've really made um, a lot of, you know, good decisions that have benefited your bank. And they would be really lucky to get you as a a supervisor. And, you know, and at first she thought, oh, no, I'm not sure about this. And I'm like, think about it, you know, and just as we talked and whatever, she kind of saw herself the way I did and how she was actually very exceptional at customer service and in, you know, being a mentor to new, new tellers and that kind of thing. And so she, uh, she decided, okay, you know, maybe this is something I need to do. And, um, you know, and, and she now fast forward, um, gosh, I think it's been, four years since I first mm-hmm. worked with her, um, you know, and, and I've, I've redone her resume a couple times. And so in that time, you know, so after she had um, applied and she ended up getting a job as assistant supervisor and then ended up getting a promotion to supervisor. And she's now actually an assistant manager of one mm-hmm. of the branches. I mean, so it's just, and it was one of those things. She, she called me her uh, cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that it's just, it was something that she did not see how she was really so very good at what she Mm -hmm. did and, you know, why she should be setting her aspirations higher because it was 
you know, definitely something that she could do a lot better than a lot of people. And I think that's one part of the resume writing process that people hate, having to dig in into their own abilities and to understand what it really means to the company, to their team, to the department. Um, that's where people have have a, a blind spot, so to speak. Uh, I mean, that's been my experience. Is is, is it becomes oh. an excavation, and it becomes a, a, a. I mean that in a positive sense, but people don't mm-hmm. really have a hard time digging into their own to dig out some of the things that you saw that was so obvious. Right. Well, and I mean, seriously, unless you're a raving narcissist, nobody likes to you feel like they're bragging yeah. about themselves. You know, people by nature usually tend to downplay what they've done. And, you know, it when you're writing a resume, when you're um, managing, your, you know, any kind of career management, you really need to be able to promote what you've yeah. done and not minimize that um you know it's it's just a matter of i mean a being comfortable talking about what you're doing and b you know walking that fine line so you don't sound like you're an egotistical you know diva because nobody wants that on their team (laughs) either so but you need to be able to um own what you've done and and to be able to speak very you know I mean, to speak proudly, but also to be very matter of fact about like, well, this is what yeah. I can do. Yeah, tap into your own, you know? uh, your inner narcissist uh, is, <laughs> is, is is a good way to really. I mean, really, if you to get that deep, you have to be willing for a few moments, I, at least a few moments of saying okay what what i've done and what it means to uh my team my people my surroundings my company and be willing to think that way you don't have to carry it around in your backpack uh (laughs) but i think for moments of marketing yourself in this day of of doing such a necessary evil yeah you you got to go there Right. Oh, exactly. You know, because otherwise, I mean, that's, that's the thing that they, they they talk about, you know, with people who are on the job and the ones who tend to end up getting overlooked the most are the ones who just diligently do their job and, and without attracting Mm. a lot of attention. And it's just, if you don't attract attention, nobody knows what you're doing. And they, they may think that you're actually underperforming because, they don't see what you're doing. And, you know, those, the, some of the, um, I think, most qualified people end up flying under the radar and, and aren't, it's not really realized how very valuable sure. they are. And so being able to promote that, you know, mm-hmm. a bit more is good, not only in the job search, but, you know, ongoing career management right, as well. Right. And I think you're like other resume writers, the good ones and the ones that really know what they're doing and really have the foresight to value people and what they do, you spend a lot of time in that front part of the resume writing digging out what people have accomplished and get them to think results-oriented and to think about uh, the impact that they have on their work surroundings, um, it, it, you know, if you don't mind, in, in, in probably in a brief way, and I know you could probably go all day about this, but g- give people an idea of the types of questions or the types of uh, ways that you help get that out of people uh, at the at the beginning of the process. Okay. Yeah. And it, and it can be kind of painful sometimes. I mean, I've had some folks get upset mm-hmm. with me yeah. because they're like, but I just do it, you know, and it's, you know, but, you know, just getting into the whole, okay, you know, you know, think about a time when there was a challenge or, you know, a mm-hmm. situation that needed to be solved. Okay. What did you do to solve that problem? And what was mm-hmm. the result? 
you know, and just getting them to start thinking about some of those stories and to start putting it together that way, like where you have your circumstances um, and then active, you know, action mm -hmm. that you took and then what results and thinking about their career in that way. They're like, oh, you know, and so they start to, you know, kind of piece together a little bit more of the problems that they solved and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, so talking about that, but also getting them to uh, kind of go back in their history a little bit into, you know, maybe some old emails. Did you get an email from a, from a supervisor or from a client complimenting you on something mm -hmm. you did to help them? Or have you gotten, you know, or a handwritten note? Those still happen right, occasionally yeah. too. <laughs> um, you know, or have you won any awards, mm -hmm. you know, in the course of your job? Um, go back, look at your old performance reviews. What kind of comments have been made about the work you do? And, you know, and that those are things that people can, oh, yeah, I remember when I did X, Y, Z. And, you know, and, and how I was a part, you know, a part of making this a success, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You know? So, I mean, just going back, um, I, I, I really in an ideal world, um, everybody would keep a uh, job yeah. journal. <laughs> and it's something that I really advocate. You know, I, I don't know how much is followed because, yeah, it can be kind of a pain in the butt, but it's even worse when you have to go back two years, three years, five years, and, and to, you know, to have that recollection of what right. did I do and, right. and that kind of thing. But if people are keeping a job journal, you know, and update it at least once a month with activities that they've done, you know, um, it becomes that much easier than at the end of the year to be able to look at their resume and say, oh, you know, I can update this with X, Y, Z instead of trying to pull things from a memory that gets really fuzzy pretty yeah. fast, actually. Yeah. Well, I call it a brag book. And um, although resume writing is not the central focus of, of me serving clients now, um, I still use it because it is such a valuable um, uh, method to help people see a little bit clearer their correct trajectory. Um, and it's, it's, it's vital. I mean, it's, it's central to everything. Even if we're talking about personal branding, uh, whether it's online, offline, you have to do that initial work. And there's almost, there's no way around it because part of the problem is people think of their present and say, well, I just, I just do the job. And really you've done it for most people who say that have done it for so long, they forgot all the processes that they took themselves through to get to that point. Mm -hmm. So really it is a very crucial part of the process uh, for those who are wanting to write their own resume and feel like that they uh, uh, haven't gotten anywhere because you haven't done that. You haven't uh, uh, sweat it yet. Right. Oh, I, and I, I totally agree with you. I mean, the brag book, job journal, right. whatever you call it. I mean, it, it is, it is a critical part to many aspects of career management. I mean, if you think about, you know, preparing for an interview, um, what better way to be able to uh, flush out those career sure. stories than going back and looking at that, you know, when you, when you wrote about it, you know, versus trying to remember mm -hmm. what the story was about. And so you have those there you know, in, in preparation for networking to help you to develop that elevator speech, you know, it, it just where, where you're talking about yourself and what you've done and uh, that kind of thing. And being able to have those stories, you know, that would help you to be able to connect with other people, you know, or if you're going to a job fair or, you know, I mean, any number of things related to your career, it, being able to have those stories there, you'll be able to very easily then pull up, you know, who you are and, you know, or if you find yourself at a crossroads in your career and you're not sure where to go, take sure. a look at your past, see what you've done, what have you enjoyed most in what you've done and what are some of the commonalities and, and that can be used to help guide you 
you know, in the future sure. as well. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to think scientifically about this or really in a, in a one, two, three format. Uh, but, and we've kind of talked about it, but this is kind of a way to kind of wrap it up in a sense of uh, just give me uh, your vision of a well-branded resume uh, in 2016. Um, if if that's not too, you know, too much to ask, but just some touch points that you feel that would show that this person, it's clear where they're going, it's clear from where they came, the story is is outstanding, and it, 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 it clarifies who I want even as an employer. You did I did, okay. but, but <laughs> some of the things you bought up was because of your, wow. the way that you kind of gone through the process here. And I think you've kind of answered some of it already, but I think, I think, right. you know, just a kind of giving people, uh, if there's one thing to carry away is that, okay, this is what I see myself branded it, it, through my resume in this yeah. way. So, um, I mean, of course, one thing that will brand a resume well is having a um, well-written mm -hmm. headline at, at the top, you know, you know your, head, your header. What do you yeah. do? You know, like in terms of a job title that or, you know, or like a general field, you know, what is it that mm -hmm. you do? that will, you know, have be something that resonates with, you know, an employer. I mean, if you say Dragon Slayer Extraordinaire, that doesn't really no. say anything. But if you say, you know, if you talk in terms of your industry, that you're just, you know, senior, um, senior software architect, that's going to, you know, speak to, who mm -hmm. you are. I mean, people will start to form um, an opinion about like, okay, what they expect this person to be doing. And then as you come down in, in that profile, you need to give specific examples that show what you have mm -hmm. done in the role. I mean, and, and accomplishments, not just duties, but like, you know, significant accomplishments in that specific role, what have you mm -hmm. done? And, you know, that you've been, you know, say the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the lead architect for a, you know, database program for the uh, postal system of Canada, blah, you know, for example, you know, and then you talk about, and then talk about, you know, some of the experiences with that, you know, I mean, just as far as like, problem specific to that that you solved right. and and that right. kind of thing and so um okay I, I sound like I, I feel like I'm kind of wandering with what I'm saying but you know but it's just that having everything really concisely supporting that I mean that's the thing that you have to think of that when you're writing a resume everything needs to support your main mm -hmm. premise this is what I do you know that and this is how I do it and this is what you can expect from me when I work for you. And, and I mean, so it's just kind of, and, and pulling all of those threads all the way through, mm -hmm. you know, so that it's not kind of going off on a tangent or being overly vague. Um, you really want the person who's reading your resume to have that very clear picture of who you mm -hmm. are. You know, you know who you are. You and you need people who are reading your resume to see you exactly as that. You don't want there to be any guesswork. You want you really want those pictures to be the same and not open to interpretation. Right. So if I'm interested in um in you know if I'm an employer, I'm interested in um you know a, a senior architect um you know, I it should be very clear from the get go. There shouldn't have to be any guesswork as to what that means and and who this person is. 
and, and the types of experiences they've had and, and the types of problems they've solved. I mean, because that's really, I mean, when it comes down to it, I think pretty much every job is going to require some degree sure. of problem solving. Sure. And you need to show what you have done when there have been problems. How have you solved them? How have you added value to your employer? Yeah. You know, what makes you special from everybody else who does this job? Right, right. Yeah, I think that is the, I think that is the, you know, as we talk about, and I think, again, that is the weakest that could be the strongest for most folks. Uh, and it sets the tone for the rest of the resume, too. It tells the employer, it says, oh, this person definitely has what I need, uh, at least right. um, as far as the skills, then they're calling you in to see if you fit. That's pretty much the 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 way that uh, the process is going to is going to go. They're going to spend the rest of the time uncovering. You know, will you fit? Do you have the right aptitude? Do you have the right attitude? Yeah. Well, and you know, and of course too, because you know, not every you know, you can't just write one resume and expect oh, this is going to work for every single job I apply for. You know, it's a matter of to properly brand the resume based on the opportunity, yeah. you know, what, you know, because every, every, within every job, there are yes. nuances. And so to, you know, make sure that you're speaking to the particular nuances of this position of this company, things that, and, you know, and so doing the research into the company and, and such to find out, okay, what's going to really matter most to them and talking about yourself still in an authentic mm. way, you know, and, and who you are, but branding yourself in a way that matters most to them and what their pain points are and how you can be a solution awesome. for them. Well, as usual, excellent job uh, in presenting. Uh, always oh. can depend on you. You make it oh. easy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh if people want to engage you more of a conversation uh perhaps to seek more about uh, your services uh, how can people contact you okay well um my website is melissacooley.com and um i can be reached by email at melissa at melissacooley.com i'm also I uh, have a Twitter handle at the job quest. And so, uh, you know, and I'm here and there and everywhere. And, you know, I'm on LinkedIn as well, too. Just look for Melissa Cooley and, you know, and uh, I think there's a few of us on there, but I'm usually pretty yeah. easy to find on LinkedIn. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And uh, um, thank you so much. One of my favorite people uh, of all time. I appreciate uh, spending time with you as always. Uh, Thank you so much for and, having me, Mark. Uh, for the rest of you, that'll be it for this one. Not that you have you don't have enough homework to do already, but uh, we <laughs> thank you very much for joining us here on the Voice of Job Seekers. Come back next week, and we'll have some more great stuff to help your career and your job search. Have a great week. <laughs>